The APC says that your party is afraid of losing to the APC. Why are you afraid? Well, you know, people that are deluded and um, have overestimate their own importance often talk like that. I mean, what are we to be afraid of? Is it a Buhari? Is it a Rotimi Abichi? A Buhari that said that he will spread Sharia throughout every part of this country? A Buhari that said Muslims should only vote for Muslims? A Buhari that said Muslims should only vote for people that will protect their faith? These are claims. This, these, these are claims, are not Mr. Shale, Shale. These are not claims. See, you know, I, I want to just repeat this, and I say this with all sense of humility, that if I quote Buhari on something, I challenge him or his spokesman, Amichi, or any of his people to come out and tell me where I've gone wrong. These are things he said in 2001. I have an excellent memory. I remember these things. I've documented them. I've said them over and over again. This is what Buhari stands for. Now, he may come up now and tell you, well, I've changed my mind. It's not quite like that. But what we are saying is this. I don't believe that the Nigerian people will ever vote for a man that believes that we should drag this country back. A man with a pitiful and disgraceful record when he was in power, he locked people up, he created people, he killed people with retroactive legislation, he carried people on the streets of London illegally, turned Nigeria into a pariah nation, a man that looted PTF, and I say that because the report, I was in government when the Haruna Adamu report was filed, I discussed with President Obama Sanjo at the time, I know what the President told myself and Aki Oshutoku privately, if not for the fact that the main person in that report, that is a man by Siraju and in law Buhari, dropped dead the day that we decided to prosecute Buhari for it, that man would have been the key prosecution witness and Buhari would have been in jail by now. The truth of the matter is that he was very corrupt and that Sirajo report, the PTF report, absolutely indicted him. A man that when he, I will finish, a man that when he was Minister of Oil in, 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 uh, in I believe it was in uh, 1987 or thereabouts, you know, uh, President Obasanjo was, 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 was the head of state at the time, it was in 1977 or thereabouts. Um, uh, 2.8 billion uh, naira went missing under his watch. That's the equivalent of 3 billion naira today. A man that committed so many atrocities. Let me tell you something that, you did with, that a lot of people don't remember. This is a man that converted all the currency that we had at that time and told everybody to convert their currency within one week, forgetting the fact that most northerners at the time dealt in cash, and most of them kept those ca the, the, the cash in their homes. They lost everything overnight simply because of Buhari's way. A man that sent so many people to jail for hundreds of years without due process, without any credible evidence. A man what, that, a, what about the tribunal that was set up? Listen to me. No lawyer attended the... Uh, let me remind you. There you were know, reports of the you tribunal. May too, you, you may be too young to know this. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, 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 was, I, was, I was, was young. I mean, you, I was, you were not alive when... when, when when Julius, when Julius Caesar was alive, but you know he lived. So that's, that's not a fair... That, no, no, let me, let me put this to you. Sure, you know, there were tribunals, but what I'm putting to you is that the only people that attended those tribunals were the judges or military judges or military administrators that were appointed by the government and, um, and uh, uh, the late Ghani Fawemi. The rest of uh, the legal world boycotted those tribunals because there was no due process. There, was no, there, were, there were no laws administered there. It was just a kangaroo court. There were many people that had been found innocent by, 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 by the ordinary courts that he now insisted must be jailed at all costs. And this man destroyed the lives of so many people, including the lives of serving governors who were locked up, who after their release died a few, a, a few months later. Bisi Onobanjo, uh, Adamuata, so many of them. Adamuata lived for quite some time, but he was never the same person again. So many of them. Them. Ambrose Ali and so many. This is what Buhari did. This is what he stands for. Unfortunately, most people that were 10 years old when Obasanjo came into power in 1999 have no recollection of his. We don't teach history in this country. So people have forgotten who Buhari was and, and what he stands for. Now, he may well have changed, but when you look at what he's saying now, when he says things that will make the country ungovernable if the PDB comes out, you know that this is an irresponsible type of person who should never be given power. And I'll tell you what, with people like Rotimi Amici around him and one or two others, <laughs> it, it, it seals the deal. It makes the point very well. His eyes were rolling. He kept on folding it out. He refused to answer your questions. You can ask me any question. I'll answer it here. All because right. we're on national Just TV. Let, let me he quickly ask you a few that questions. And tell, that quickly, tells you what uh, they so stand that we can, for. We can, we can move forward. That tells you what um, they stand for. You, you were talking, you've been talking about your sure. candidates. Well, a lot of people want to ask questions, especially a lot of electorates who have not yet decided on who to vote for. They will be asking themselves, why should I vote for Jonathan at a sure. moment where the nation is facing some of its challenges? Okay. And, for example, we have a problem with the economy. We have issues with uh, a few, I mean, infrastructure. We have issues with insecurity. Well, first of all, let me say that it's a good question. And, and I'm glad that we're already talking about something that's very important now. Uh, the first thing is this. What Jonathan stands for, what the PDP stands for, is a group of people that wish to create a virile, strong, modern, secular state. 
where civil liberties will be protected, human rights will be guaranteed, plurality of opinion and plurality of views will be allowed. You can say anything you want under a PDB government, even against the president, and nothing will happen to you. That's far more than I can say for the other side. Secondly, you're talking about the insurgency, you're talking about insecurity. A few months ago, we were all very upset about what was going on in this country. Today, it's interesting that not even Rotimi Amici and the APC can concede the fact, they can't even bear, bring themselves to concede the fact that what our gallant soldiers have been doing in the last few weeks in the northeastern part of the country, taking Baga back, taking Mongunu back, taking all these towns back from Boko Haram, and fighting a concerted war, a concerted effort in, in, in collaboration with our, with, our, with our West African neighbors is a wonderful thing. We're now winning the war. And we should be able to commend the president for that and our gallant armed forces, whose members die every day on the war front, securing our lives and our property. You talk about the economy. Nigeria has been, has been, has been voted the biggest economy on the African continent. This has never happened before until Jonathan got there. That's the position that we're in now. There are a few challenges here and there. But at the end of the day, you must accept and appreciate one thing, that this is a work in progress. And I believe that it's important to focus on that and ensure that we keep moving forward with this president to effect the changes, the positive changes that he has promised to and that he's indeed doing. The other side are offering change. Change to what? Change to darkness? Change to going back to the years where people are locked up for doing nothing? All right. you know, uh, no, 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 that's, that's not change. People will that ask is, a yes. question that for six years we've had President Jonathan yes. and we have still have this problem. So they let, I mean, they, they trust some of the issues that we, the challenges that you have, uh, yeah. I mean, that you uh, accepted that we have, um, uh, the confidence, where would the confidence come? Well, first of all, you said we still have these problems. A few, a few months and years ago, like I said earlier, Boko Haram had slot were bombing, you know, bombing all over Abuja. I've lived in Abuja for 11 years. I've lived there for 11 years. They were bombing Abuja. They were bombing uh, Kanu. They were bombing uh, Niger State, towns in Niger, Suleja, Mina, so on and so forth. Throughout the north central, they were bombing. They were pushed to the northeast, eastern, eastern, eastern states, the northeastern zone. They were contained there. They made a few gains there. Then eventually we kicked in. Our special forces were trained. They were brought back into the country. They worked hard. They were well equipped. Meanwhile, nobody was giving us arms. The Americans never sold us one bullet. You need to know this, okay? And we fought these people on our own soil. And what's been happening in the last few weeks has been next to a miracle. We are pushing them out. How come Nigerians are not commending this government for that? Because they ought to be. So we have made gains there. We've also made gains, made gains in the economy. There are a few hiccups here and there. But compared to where we were a couple of years back, certainly we've done very far. Two years ago, nobody spoke about Nigeria being the largest economy in this country. A couple of years ago, we never had gains in agriculture the way that we have them today. We never had gains in the fertilizer, industry, in the fertilizer sector. We never had gains uh, throughout all infrastructural development, work, uh, sal uh, worker salaries, so on and so forth. We have that today. So let's stick to that. Positive change, not primitive change, not the change that Roti Miyamichi, Buhari, and the others are offering, which is nothing but a change from light to darkness. All right. Um, your party at some point showed that you were not happy with the, uh, with, uh, the fact that you were going through the yeah. election. You supported that. Your party supported that we sh the election should be postponed. And a lot of people are asking the question, if Ina says he was ready, yeah. why is your party on the lane of saying postpone this election? And... There are talks about the fact that your party actually want a window, perhaps you were not ready, and you want a window where you could... Like, like I've said before, it, it, it's always a very sad thing when some people become victims or prisoners of their own delusions. And this, this narrative that you just put forward is the narrative of people like Buhari, Rotimi Amici, and the APC. The suggestion that we are the ones that stop this election from going ahead. It is absolute bunkum and nonsense. Well, Amici was here earlier, he lied to you. The INEC chairman spoke about the challenges that he himself faced, um, and the, the, the fact that it would have been difficult to proceed with these elections simply because, number one, the issue of PVCs were a problem, where 34% of the Nigerian people did not have PVCs had been effectively disenfranchised. That is an issue. And if the elections had proceeded, it would have been a problem in terms of credibility if a whole load of Nigerians, 34% of them, were not able to vote. Then there were the security issues, which are very, very real. I mean, the fact of the matter is that if it is that we conducted those elections on February the 14th, the likelihood is that there would have been carnage and danger presented to the 700,000 INEC workers and to voters on both sides because we would have been fighting each other. We've never done that. We need to ensure that we have soldiers on the streets to keep us from fighting one another and putting the lives of those INEC officials in danger. Right. And these are things that 
uh, Jega acknowledged. Now, uh, another aspect of it, which I've mentioned before, is this. A situation where, in some of the states in the north, 90% of, of, of PVCs have been collect collected, particularly in Boko Haram areas. It seems so strange. Whereas places like Lagos, at that time, it was, it was, as, far, it was as low as 50% and, and various other states. A situation where, in Lagos State, INEC officials were queried simply because they refused to allow non-indigenous to have PVCs. That tells you something. Something funny is going on. So, INEC was not ready. Now, six weeks is nothing. Let them get ready. Let us all be. Let the armed forces be ready. Let INEC be ready. But as far as the PDP is concerned, we were ready on February the 14th, and we're ready any day, any time for these elections. And I put this question to you right now. If your party, should your party lose these 2015 elections, what would you do? What would I do? What would your party do? Well, let me just tell you this. We, ha we are not the ones that have always resisted the will of the people. We are not the ones that are living in denial. We are not the ones that said, you know, this can never happen. As far as we are concerned, our position has been fixed and clear. If there's a free and fair election on the date of the elections, and President Goodluck Jonathan, God forbid, loses that election, of course we'd accept the verdict of the Nigerian people. But let me just tell you this. That is not going to happen. Buhari and his APC are going to get the beating of their lives in terms of votes. We are going to defeat them. We're going to defeat them all over this country. We're going to show them that it's not mouth alone that gives you victory, but solid, concrete proposals. And we will sell our programs, and the Nigerian people will come to us. Chief Femi us. Fani Kaude, Director of Media, Jonathan Sambo, Campaign Organization. Of course, a former Minister of Aviation talking to us on politics today. Thank you for Thank you coming very much, Joe. Appreciate, really appreciate it. Shalom. Coming. Well, and that's, um, the, that's it on the program tonight. On behalf of the team here at Chinese Television Headquarters in Lagos, I'm Shane Joaquin Balay. Till next time, bye for now.